Welcome to lecture two. This week we're going to look in more detail at the Six Sigma DMAIC process. And in particular, we're going to look at the define phase. So if you recall from an earlier lecture, we're really on this journey. So before we get into the detail of DMAIC and what all that means, at the end of the day, we're on this journey. And we're asking ourselves, where do we want to be? Certain goals and objectives and so on. We'd like to listen to our customer like to understand where they would like us to be, better quality product or service. We've got to then identify where we are, so what the current metrics are, how we've got to collect that data, and then how to get there using these lean tools. So we'll move on to the uh, DMAIC, the Six Sigma DMAIC Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, Control. It's a methodology or it's a roadmap, and it's used for problem solving, process product improvement. And the idea is that you walk through each of these phases. So if I call up the laser pointer here, we start with the define phase, and then we go to measure and so on, analyze, improve, control. But this week we're going to look at the define phase. Now, it's seen here as a circular path, but actually you may have an iterative process where you would define, then measure and maybe define a little bit more again, then maybe move on to analyze, and then when you analyze, you might find you have to measure some more. So um, don't take it as this kind of linear, circular path where you, you walk through each phase, and once that's over, you're finished, okay? So the idea is the Six Sigma teams use this to make for their projects, be they green belt or black belt. So this chart here shows in a little bit more detail what each of the phases mean. So define, D is defining a problem or improvement opportunity. So in this case, we've got to determine the goals, identify the problem areas, and understand the customer concerns. And then so on with each of the different phases, measure, analyze, improve, control. Now you might see um, different kind of definitions of what exactly goes on in here. Um, and you might find some tools are used in more than one area, and that's fine as well, because it goes back to the earlier comment about this iterative process. Uh, but if we look at the define phase, we can break that out in, in more detail on the next slide. So we can break down the define phase steps really into five steps where we start out with the objectives. And the idea is that you define the opportunity and we'll ask ourselves, you know, what are the goals? This concept of quality costs or the costs of quality, we're going to spend a bit of time on that in this lecture. Talk about the different types of quality costs, such as prevention, appraisal, and failure. We then may want to survey the customer, and there are some survey tools we can use to do that, or we can just ask them. And in that, we're going to define some critical to quality customer requirements. From that, we can map our process, and we are going to use a manufacturing process example and use some tools here as well, flow charting, value stream mapping. So we'll spend a bit of time on that in this lecture. From that, then we can uh, write the project charter. For those of you who want to do a little bit more background reading, there is this A3 process that the Toyota production system introduced and is now used in a lot of companies. And uh, then you're into using some of the generic project management tools. You know, you may use Gantt charts, but in particular, I'm identifying here the soft tools such as building your team, gaining commitment, managing the project. If we go back to uh, looking at what our goals are, in any process, be it a service process, be it a restaurant, be it a hospital, be it a manufacturing process, I mean, there's really um, kind of four key metrics or four, three, four measures of value that the customer wants. So they want better quality. They want it faster, quicker. Uh, better efficiency or productivity, and they want lower cost. So what we've really got to do is we've got to specify, specify this value from the uh, standpoint of the end customer. And we've got to ask ourselves our current products or services, how we meet them in relation to these. Now, within each of these areas, we'll break down into more details such as quality, speed. Quality can break down into, um, you know, DPMO, PPM, yield, and so on, and we'll have a separate lecture on that. Uh, speed, you know, time, cycle time, lead time. Um, there's efficiency measures as well, productivity, utilization, and then cost is really cost. Uh, but we're going to talk about the cost of poor quality uh, as an example. So we've got to look at what the value is to the customer, and that's really what they're paying for. If you go back to the earlier comment about value add and non-value add. 
So let's take an example product and we're going to run this through a manufacturing process which we have in the college in Sligo and give you that as an example. So here we have this executive pen holder and we're really just using this as an example and a common theme throughout the lectures. And you can see here we've got the pen, uh, we've got the uh, thermometer, hygrometer, so we're measuring temperature and humidity and then there's a little holder here which uh, the pen goes into. So we have a uh, assembly, an automated assembly process, which you will see here on the next slide. The product comes out of this warehouse here, which we're going to walk you through, goes through these different process steps, a robotic assembly station, there's a production control station here, there's an inspection station here. So let's have a look at that in more detail now. Let's look at a typical manufacturing process for this pen holder assembly. So what we're assembling here is this executive pen holder and uh, we have some gauges and a couple of machining steps. So there's five process steps. The first step is the warehouse. Then the part goes into the turn or lathe. Then goes into the milling machine. There's a Festo assembly robot here. There's an inspection station here. And then finally, the part goes back into the warehouse. So now that we've defined the process and we know what product is, we're asking ourselves now, well, what do we want to improve? And we're using this function, y is a function of x or the output is a function of the inputs. And if we look back again, we could try to improve quality by reducing defects. Uh, we could reduce complaints. We might have internal complaints from downstream processes, external complaints, external customers. And we could try to reduce cost. So we really need to define our problem in terms of um, what the real problem is. And we need to base it on real data. So we'll do that in the measure phase. But we, we can't just use opinions based on who shouted the loudest, what the squeaky wheel is. If we look at this y function here, which is a function of the inputs, it's, it's a fundamental equation used in Six Sigma. So we're trying to move basically from the left side to the right side of the equation so we can take control of the process. What we want to do is we want to obtain knowledge about these y's and x's or the inputs and outputs as we characterize the process and then optimize it. And we do this by walking through the five phases. Once we understand what our goals are now, we need to move on and determine what our quality costs are. So we're going to talk a bit more detail about the cost of quality and the different types of quality costs. Because with all Six Sigma projects, there has to be a financial saving. And that's the end of um, part A, uh, looking at the Six Sigma DMAIC defined phase.